Thanks to Jalen Hurts' elite performance against the Cincinnati Bengals, the Super Bowl belief in the 2024 Birds. It's back on Stock Up, Stock Down coming your way on this Tuesday edition of Locked On Eagles. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. Welcome into this Tuesday edition of the show. I'm Louis DiBiase, joined as always by Gino Camilleri. We're brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash NFL and use the code in all lowercase NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. Continuing to recap, a relaxing, fun, dominant win, 37-17, a statement win over Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. And Gino, the statement was... The 2024 Philadelphia Eagles can still win a Super Bowl. And Jalen Hurts reinstilled, at least my belief, in that path still being possible. I think you had more belief than I did last week, and a lot of fans that were hitting us up on YouTube and X, I think you were getting some stray bullets, but it was me. Like, I'm the one that was lowering my expectations. I started to shift gears thinking not what's the best path to a Super Bowl, but What's just the best way to get this team in the playoffs? I thought it was going to be a run first 2021 like mentality. I had lowered my expectations for this team and honestly for this quarterback. But Jalen Hurts yesterday showed that he still has special in him. We've seen a lot of good this year, but we haven't seen special great since that game against Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills last year. And this was by far the best performance he's had since that game, Gino. And statistically, it was even better than any game he had last year. Since Super Bowl 57, that was his highest game in the completion percentage department, yards and air yards per attempt, and QBR. His EPA per dropback was in the 98th percentile. Like that Jalen Hurts that we saw on Sunday showed me that, yeah, this team with their ceiling can still win a championship. And on top of that, he was plus 20.2 in CPOE. That was the third highest in his career, according to Next Gen Stats. He also had the longest air yard completion in his career at 59.3 yards to Devontae Smith. You talk about a performance where the reason I kept saying that I believe in him is because I've seen examples of this in the past. And the conversation got skewed a little bit to can he do what he did in the past. Sure. And I think a lot like of to say people, was not my take for the record. No, it was not. And that's why I had a little pushback yeah. on some of the comments on X on YouTube. People were saying he can't push the ball downfield. He can't read the middle of the field. Heck, he can't even read a defense. Mm-hmm. And that's so unfair to what we have seen him do in the past. Now, was he doing that on a consistent level in 2024 up until yesterday? No, he was not. Over the last couple games, has it been much better? Yes, and the reason why I still had confidence was because if he took care of the football, which he has done the last three weeks, he was able to play within the context of the offense when Kellen Moore is scheming up a game plan that puts your two reserve offensive linemen in a positive position to where Fred Johnson only allows one pressure to Trey Hendrickson on 21 dropback attempts. Tyler Steen looks very good, and Jalen Hurts can push the ball downfield to the two guys that you knew are the heartbeat of your offense. And heck, Saquon Barkley had a 100-plus yard day as well, but it all starts with quarterback one being confident and showing us what he has done in the past. And to say he couldn't do any of those things, well, watch the tape and tell me he can't do them because you would just be straight up ignorant at this point because he showed you yesterday six for six across the middle against the blitz. He has been exceptional. Even if you want to keep moving the goalposts farther and farther back for Jalen Hurts, he kicked the crap out of that ball and he put it through the uprights on those goalposts that you keep moving back for him. Yesterday was what we knew Jalen Hurts could do and what they paid him $50 million per season to do. Hats off to Jalen Hurts, man. That was a heck of a game, dude. And, and, you know, the difference between my take about Jalen last week and some of our listeners and viewers was my take wasn't that he can't do it. In fact, I had said we've seen it before. It's why he got that $200 million contract. We just hadn't seen it in a long time. And until I see that, 
I wasn't going to believe this team could win a Super Bowl. Jalen did that yesterday, and he did more than just that. I mean, as you mentioned, he was 6-for-6 six six over the middle for 102 yards and a touchdown, a perfect 158.3 passer rating. A lot of that goes to Kellen Moore. As you mentioned, the great protection, elite weapons stepping up, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Saquon Barkley, heck, even Grant Calcaterra, who we'll talk about later. But Jalen was just on his game, and it was mm-hmm. the perfect game to do it because – the other side, the Bengals had an elite quarterback in their own right in Joe Burrow, who early on was cooking, especially on third down. Jalen had to match him drive for drive, and he did that and more. And that was just, again, it was such an encouraging feeling because when you feel like your quarterback can't win those kinds of games, it doesn't matter how good your defense is, your run game, what your record is, I at least personally will have a tougher time than some believing your team can win a championship. So that game, at least for me, matters a lot more the context of the victory. A win is not always a win in my eyes. That is the exact kind of win that makes me believe you can win a championship. When you pass to get the lead, I think Doug Peterson's who I took this from. Somebody alluded to this on Twitter. I couldn't remember where I heard it, but I think Doug used to say, you pass the score points and you run to win, and that was the blueprint on Sunday. That's the identity I want moving forward. And if you look at the box score, they had to run to win to an extent, yeah. man. Jalen and they Hurts, ran it really well. Jalen Hurts showed you that he was either one, just not confident in his legs, or two, trying to hold back a little bit. But if he plays like that on the ground and you make this, and I haven't made the point in nearly two years because we hadn't seen it, if you can be a 12 versus 10, Mm-hmm. Your offense has a guy in Jalen Hurts who is multi-dimensional. I was gonna say I haven't heard you say that in a while. If you could put one guy in conflict or multiple guys in conflict like they did really well the last three weeks, Jalen Hurts can take advantage of that. But at the same time, it falls into everybody doing their part. When Kellen Moore finally leans into going all in to an extent on under center plays, I believe they had 22 of them yesterday, which was the most that they have had all season by a long shot. One or two a game. He finally leaned into what Jalen Hurts and this offense can do really well. And Jalen Hurts off of play action, a little bit of the RPO game, and being able to keep his eyes downfield. He had 2.93 seconds on average to throw the football. The the hiccups in his game came from him trying to play hero ball, hero ball and held on to the ball a little bit too long. But playing within the context of holding on to the ball and knowing when your shots are going to develop, that's exactly what he did. Maybe the biggest play of the game, Lou, is a third and 16 where he had to make something happen out of structure. Finds A.J. Brown in a nice little zone sit north of the sticks. That kind of changed the game, man, because you're down 10-3. to Yes, it kept you on your toes knowing that we can go, Mm -hmm. like you have been alluding to, toe-to-toe with some of the best quarterbacks. But this is just another example, Lou. Like, who at this point in the NFL has Jalen Hurts, in terms of top quarterbacks, not gotten the better of? He's beat Pat Mahomes even in the regular season. He's Mm -hmm. beat Josh Allen. He's beat Joe Burrow. Lamar Jackson is going to be the next test. Lamar soon. If he beats Lamar, he's basically run the table against some of the top guys. So, yesterday... As good as Joe Burrow was, the story is about how great oh, Jalen Hurts better. was. Yeah, Jalen was better in the mobility. I'm glad you brought up the mobility. It looked like 2021, early season, mm-hmm. 2022. That one run after the third and 16 on the design draw play where he jukes a guy out of his entire uniform. That was peak. We've and seen we that seen before. That. Yeah, seen it before and, in the past, man. We're just waiting to see it again. And me and you were both questioning, is it the injuries, the wear and tear? Has he lost a step? Like, what is the problem? Is it just scheme and defenses know what's coming when it comes to his mobility? I think it might just be, now that we've seen him do that again, it might have just been that he was playing more cautious, like he wasn't going mm-hmm. full gear to stay healthy and was kind of picking and choosing his spots. Here's, hang on, hang on. I, I don't, don't want to interrupt, Lou. No, you're good. But remember, we've had this conversation in the past, and this goes back to somebody that we had in our division over a decade ago when Shanahan tried to make RG3 more of a true pocket passer mm-hmm. and limited his legs 
that destroyed his entire career. Yeah, maybe that's a good point. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. I, I, I don't know. More, I'm seeing more examples of it. And then yesterday kind of swayed me the other way. Maybe they were trying to do that. Like, maybe they were just saying, Jalen, you got to hang in the pocket. Like, don't take off. Yeah. We want this to be a downfield pass. Because I thought offense. it was a physical thing. But clearly, Gino, it was it's more not. of a planned, calculated mental yes. thing. Maybe, like, Kellen Moore comes in, right? And he's saying, okay, Jalen, we know that we can get a lot of stuff down the field. And even yeah. yesterday, I mean, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, look at their yards per uh, catch. I mean, it's it's 15-plus every single game. Maybe he came in early in the season and said, Jalen, I know what you can do with your legs, right? Yeah. But we have to establish a rhythm in the passing game game and how we're going to do that is we have to allow our downfield threats to open things up so we could play downfield to to the to the check down right mm. but it's going to take time so hold on to the ball but yeah, now maybe it, yeah it's they've like designed safer. it differently it see it seems that Nick Sirianni maybe gotten Kellen Moore's ear and is like Hey, dude, like I know I did one thing well in the past, and that was designing up some things for Jalen Hurts in the run game. Because there were times he would not even beat an interior defender to the Mm -hmm. edge, and I'm like, does he not have that speed? Not that Jalen was ever Lamar Jackson's speed, but you saw a gear kick up a notch in 2021 and 2022, and I'm like, does he still have that? Maybe you're right. Maybe in his head they're like, hey, don't take those extra two or three yards. Like, Let's live Mm -hmm. to play another down. And yesterday, Jalen just understood the situation and said, no, yep. like we need those extra yards today. I'm going to play with my ears pinned back as a mm-hmm. runner. And it was just good to see that at least physically, like that isn't yes. gone. And it wasn't because of an inability to do that. Like Carson Wentz, you saw after 2017 and that leg injury, sure, he still was more mobile than the majority of quarterbacks in the league, but he wasn't spin moving Crave on LeBlanc mm-hmm. anymore, like against the Chicago Bears. He had lost a step physically. With Jalen, clearly now we know that's not physical and – that's that's a good feeling because as good as Jalen's been in the pocket recently, hurts if he doesn't have the mobility. Like that's like his main. That's one of the main reasons you pay that kind of player is the dual threat ability. Mm-hmm. And we were oh, I, I can't believe I just remembered that the whole RG three conversation because we talked about that f- at length mm-hmm. for a while once this next evolution of Jalen Hurts discussion started to come to fruition. And, uh, and I am just speculating on the whole, how they are coaching it with inside the Same, building thing, of but putting two and two together, you said it Lou and, and made me think like if he's coached to do that in those situations, of course it's going to make him process a little bit slower, which is going to make him play a little bit slower. And it's mm-hmm. probably going to look like he lost this step, but you saw that confidence just in the last yeah, three Yeah, he games, wasn't thinking different. when he was running. There was no, should I grab this yard? Yes. Should I get out? When should it's, I slide? It's it was, boom. Just Even go. his eyes were up too, though, Lou. Yeah. Like, it's not, he put his head down and I got to go make something happen. It was, my eyes are up. I see my lane. I saw things develop downfield. Let yeah. me go pick up the yards. The second play of the game, the pocket collapses on a misprotection from the offensive line. And Jalen Hurts does a prototypical Jalen Hurts thing that we were saying multiple years ago made him the player he was to make an offense 12 on 10, and you got that yesterday. The rushing touchdown, that made me feel the most confident because you saw, you know, old school Jalen Hurts, not just a tush-push rushing touchdown. Like, you saw him beat guys to the edge, Mm -hmm. and it was a great block by Grant Calcaterra to help him get in. But, like, you know, that's the run that made me feel the best because, again, some of these runs on the edge – that's where he has been beating guys. So to see that he still had that speed, that was one of my favorite plays of the game. I thought he played and processed at a very high rate yesterday. Outside of maybe one play on that the Kenny Gainwell, Gainwell almost interception, it yeah. wasn't like last week where he he misses an underneath throw to Devontae mm-hmm. Smith and, and looks more downfield. He saw everything develop. And right from the jump, you see a mirrored pattern where – Devontae Smith runs a very deep in. A.J. Brown runs an intermediate in. There's a window for him to get it in the middle of the field. Boom, he's off and clicking right away. First time all season this offense scores points on the first drive of the season. He didn't just go toe-to-toe with Joe Burrow. They landed multiple knockout blows in this game. Something we were waiting for, Lou, to put an opponent to bed and not play with your food. There were so many other players that shined as well. Today's not going to be stock up, stock down. We're going to do two segments of stock up. 
Going to keep it positive because I don't even know who I'd criticize after a huge dominant 37-17 win over the Cincinnati Bengals. So stock up coming your way right here on the Locked On Eagles podcast. Locked On Eagles is brought to you by America's number one sports book. It's FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel because right now, new customers, you're going to bet $5. That's all you got to do and get $150 back in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. Again, all you got to do is bet $5. If you win, you're going to get $150 back in bonus bets. So if you went with LOE3 and took that over on Devontae Smith receptions or hammered the anytime touchdown for number six, you'll cash that 5 bucks and turn it into $150 in bonus bets at FanDuel. Dot com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Thanks so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. Time now for Stock Up after a 37-17 win over the Cincinnati Bengals. And, you know, a main reason Jalen Hurts was able to have the MVP like 2022 like performance that he did against the Bengals was because of the offensive game plan was because of the play caller in Kellen Moore and you alluded to this with the under center looks play action a moving pocket that was exactly a Kellen Moore special offense that we were expecting from week one and on and it's just been too far and few between where you've seen like his root concepts it's been too much I feel like Nick Sirianni offense and seeing more of a Kellen Moore style offense yesterday, I think unlocked a new level of Jalen that we have not seen this year. Well, maybe he took it really personal that Dylan Gabriel surpassed him on the total throwing for college football in terms of yards the other day. And he went into the game plan and said, Hey, I might not be in college anymore, but I'm in the NFL and I'm a damn a good offensive play caller. And I think you got that yesterday, Lou, to go touchdown, 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 touchdown on three consecutive drives where one of them was right before half where you had to kill a bunch of time, four plus minutes, check that off and did that. They get it back right after half where they can completely flip the game on its head. What did they do? A four plus minute drive where they scored a touchdown again late in the game when they had to run the rock to put it to bed they did exactly that but it all started with how he set that game plan up early on Jalen Hurts from the get-go was in a rhythm getting Saquon downhill is the move when they can be under center and Saquon could get a head start he is a lethal runner he can get downhill quickly and then all of a sudden now teams have to respect the play action The big play to Devontae Smith, it wasn't a turn your back to the defense play action, but it was, we're going to fake the handoff, we're going to get Jalen Hurts and work him off platform to his right a little bit to get away from Trey Hendrickson, very smart move from Kellen Moore to design that up, and then all all of a sudden, we have those deep shots, which we know is the root of this offense. Very well done to know where your bread is buttered getting Saquon over 100 yards. Both Devontae and AJ go for five-plus receptions each, north of 75 yards. And then the guys that had to hit a couple corner threes, Kenny Gainwell even ran well yesterday Mm -hmm. in spots. Grant Calcaterra, welcome to the show, my friend. He is all of a sudden the guy when it comes to playing in the pass game. When it comes to the tight end position without Dallas Goddard, this team really likes to run 12 personnel as good as they are with those two wide receivers and running 11 when Jahan Dotson is in the game. They know that they want to play 12, make it multiple. These under center play action looks are what is helping Jalen Hurts, and it all stems from Kellen Moore understanding his personnel. We were waiting. After Vic Fangio unlocked that defense and figured out his personnel, putting Cooper DeGene in there, yep. when is Kellen Moore and Nick Sirianni going to figure it out? It was the last shoe to drop. It was the one it Achilles happened. heel that was holding you back, and I totally agree. It feels like Moore finally understood his offense and really tapped into what has been untapped potential. 
And, you know, I love that you mentioned the role players because stock up to the unsung heroes. As you mentioned, Grant Calcaterra, the Eagles finally have a respectable passing offense in 12 personnel. Mm-hmm. Oh, since Zach Ertz got traded in 2021, your 12 personnel has been so predictable of what's coming because Jack Stahl was just not a legitimate receiving threat. And Grant Calcaterra wasn't ready yet as a blocker and the injuries as well. He wasn't really able to contribute much over the last few years. But he had three for 58 in this game. He had over, what, 60 yards receiving against mm-hmm. the Browns. This is huge. And as you mentioned, Dotson was not getting meat off the bones. Like he looked kind of like 2022, 2023 Quez Watkins, if not less, like he's just not been involved at all. So it's great to get one of these role players at tight end and receiver stepping up when their number is called, but it wasn't just him. Like Fred Johnson, 22 pass blocking snaps, only one pressure allowed on Trey Hendrickson. Who's one of the best pass rushers in the game. Isaiah Rogers forces that tip ball on Jamar chase. There were just so many unsung heroes from that game. Even you were talking about before the show, like Jordan Davis made sure Chase Brown averaged only a little over two yards a pop. I mean, there were so many good role players on Sunday. And heck, you can even go into the coaching staff and defensive backs coach Christian Parker. I know I mentioned him on the the post-game show yesterday, but how good is he to coach these guys up and get the next man ready to go? That's not an easy spot, dude. (laughs) <laughs> Isaiah Rogers getting put into the game and we were talking about this over text that when you are forced into a game at corner, mm-hmm. you know, football one-on-one when our best players lined up the ball's over coming. at that side, the ball is going to Especially that side. Especially it's Jamar Chase. So you haven't played all game in a huge moment. You got to go cover Jamar Chase one-on-one. Like that's not an easy spot. So Christian Parker, your coach to tell you in that situation that, Hey, if it's you and Jamar Chase, If one is lined up on your side, it's coming your way. For him to play it perfectly, which you know they have ran this situation in practice time and time and time and time again because you got two really good downfield receivers to work with and AJ and Devontae to go and cover every day. But Isaiah Rodgers to just be ready and like not even fall asleep. like To know that it's coming my way and I'm going to run this route for him, stay in phase the entire way, maybe even run the route better than Jamar Chase ran it, to be aware in that context, football intelligence through the roof, to know that Chauncey Gardner-Johnson is right there, and to locate the ball, get back towards the ball, to adjust your body, and tip it to him, that's a perfect play that doesn't happen on Sunday without coaching it properly Monday through Saturday, week in and week out. Those unsung heroes, when the next man is ready to come into the game, boy, oh boy, are they ready. And Fred Johnson, dude, like what a great story. He is a He's going to get a bag and good for him after this season Probably, because yeah. he is a legitimate left tackle and he kept Trey Hendrickson arguably the the most underrated pass rusher in the sport of course. because we have a theory that he doesn't, wear, he doesn't wear gloves. He doesn't look like he should be a good Yes, exactly. But he's As still an aesthetic super guy, good. I understand. And Fred Johnson kept him at bay. And, and heck, even Tyler Steen, I thought he played really, really well in the run game. Lou, that was a, a nonsense penalty where he's finishing a play to push his guy forward. We, we have to have a discussion with refs. What is forward progress at this point? Because they don't know when to well, blow. Well, when Devontae dead. Smith has the ball, it doesn't exist. It does and not exist. And by the way, speaking of number six, like stock up to Devontae so Smith, you know, he has not been involved a lot in the last few games. And you saw what happens when he is involved. He's one of the most clutch players in the NFL. And in that second half, not just the touchdown, which really put the Eagles in command, but even that third and seven where the Eagles are up by, I think, seven or 10 at that mm-hmm. point. But if the Bengals get the ball back, if they don't convert there, there's still plenty of time to come back. Devontae is in the slot, gets open. He's done that a lot this year where on third down late in games, he has gotten that ball and he has moved the chains. And, and that's why you got to get number six involved. Before that, he had, I think, between the last uh, the entire Giants game and the first half of the Bengals, he had like two or three catches for negative yards. Mm-hmm. He is just too good to not get involved. And he showed you in the second half why you got to force him the ball sometimes a full circle discussion that Kellen Moore identified that he has two really good wide receivers who, Hey, if they can play and understand leverage on the outside where you're kind of restricted because you have the sideline there. So you're, you really have to understand leverage. Well, why can't they do that in the slot and just get free yards in the middle of the field on that third and seven conversion to Devonte Smith. If he doesn't get shoestring tackled, he he's pounding the ball because he knew he could have probably got to the end zone. 
Just do more of that. Do more of the simple things to your really good football players. And you can't forget about Devontae. He's so freaking good, man. That touchdown and was just beautiful, man. How I many mean, times have we seen guys, and if you watch Sunday Night Football in a big-time spot, Kevontae Turkin Turpin fails to track the ball in the air, hits him on the helmet, and the mm-hmm. Cowboys are out of that game. Devontae Smith, he is like a center fielder. Willie Mays, every single time, How he tempos his routes is one of those things that I think goes really under the radar because what he's able to do where he is selling things short and then he gears up and goes vertical and then all of a sudden when he's in full stride, he could just accelerate down and he's on the spot for Devontae Smith and him and AJ Brown excel at doing that and I would hate to have to cover those guys in the open space. Like, How do you defend that? How do you defend somebody who can gear down zero to 60, gear up zero to 60, no, lose no pace when he sits down into his hips and gets into his brakes. And then you got to go to the catch point and you're like, oh, this guy's 165 pounds. I can outdo him one of the at best the catch point. Catch wrong, in the wrong. He's going to outdo you, moss you every single time. Like he, he's so good. That's one of the best catch and throws to Devontae since. One of his he, best catches. I think career. that's like arguably up there with the, one against Pat Sertain, yeah. like as good of a couple play. of the ones against Washington too. I love what mm-hmm. he said too after the game. They asked him like, "Why are you so good in those situations?" And he just said, simply put, "I can see the ball and they can't." And it's not just that though. He's downplaying his abilities, like his mm-hmm. body control. Like you said, this guy is 160 pounds. He weighs as much as us, and you know, it's unbelievable. Maybe you. I got like 40 pounds on this guy. <laughs> if we're being honest, dude. <laughs> I mean, slim. That's the the reason that he has that nickname, and the fact that he can still high point those balls and win those contested situations is unbelievable. So stock up to, and AJ Brown as well was so good yesterday, but Devonte deserves some flowers because, you know, he was hurt. He took that tough shot. He was mm-hmm. out of game and then he really wasn't involved outside of the bye week. So it was great to see Devonte right. back uh, against one the final thing on this. Lou yeah, as good sure. as Devonte is by himself, as good as AJ is mm-hmm. by himself, dude, together yeah. it's, you you can it's it's clay and stuff in their mm-hmm. prime it really is like they're so they are they're the bad boys they're the splash brothers yeah. for a reason imagine man. not when, paying them the Bengals have that and they're gonna let t higgins walk i think that's nuts dude i don't have any sympathy for any team that either. doesn't play good football players especially guys that can catch the football i totally agree the defense stock up to a lot of those players we'll get into that coming up next right here on lockdown eagles <laughs> This episode of the Lockdown Eagles podcast is brought to you by Hillsdale College. Time is our most precious commodity, so don't waste it scrolling through the same mind-numbing content for hours and hours. How can you spend it wisely to improve yourself? History, economics, the great works of literature, the meaning of the U.S. Constitution. Did you study these things in school? Probably not, or even if you did, it might be time for a refresher. Time and technology have changed a lot of things, but they have not changed basic, fundamental truths about the world and our place in it. Our sponsor, Hillsdale College, is offering more than 40 free, that's right, free online courses, including the Constitution 101, the meaning and history of the Constitution, introduction to free market economics, and so much more. All of Hillsdale's courses are self-paced so that you can start whenever and tune in wherever. Plus, you can go deeper with readings, quizzes, discussions, or just enjoy the lectures. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost. Again, it's completely free with over 40 choices. It's easy to get started at hillsdale.edu slash locked on. This episode of LOE is also brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks, which is the best place to get real money sports action when it comes to daily fantasy sports with over 10 million members and B as in billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. All you have to do is pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. So if you have been riding the Jalen Hurts and the Saquon Barkley train and the momentum the last couple weeks, I guarantee you over at Prize Picks, you've been having a very good time. So if you're new to Prize Picks, though, and you want to get in on the action, there's only one way to get started and that is to sign up and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. You can even play with what they call flex play, which means that you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money even if your picks 
do not hit. And Price Picks offers weekly promotions such as Taco Tuesday, where picks are discounted for each player up to 25% off of their projection to pro- provide even more value to your lineup. So to get in on the action today, download the app and use code Locked On NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. So that's code Locked On NFL. $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks run your game. All right, let's continue with stock up for the Eagles after a 37 to 17 win over the Bengals. I don't even know who would be down. Maybe Avante Maddox. He needs to not be playing anymore. Ever. Like, let's get Sidney Brown eventually in those six defensive back looks or Keely Ringo. Mm-hmm. Don't want Maddox out there. But outside of that, I got really nothing to say negative about that game, Gino. And we got to give stock up to these two players who we hype up every single week. But it's just, it's so exciting still that they have these two guys, not just Quinion Mitchell, but also Cooper DeGene. I mean, Gino, there were so many reasons the 2023 Eagles fell flat and completely collapsed in the second half of the year. But when it comes to what the main reason was when it comes to on field issues, personnel problems, what they were missing, it was youth, speed, and tackling in the secondary. Quinion Mitchell has not allowed almost anything his way to beat him. Cooper DeGene, his tackling specifically, almost had a pick yesterday, but the tackling specifically has changed this defense. They are young, they are fast, they do not miss tackles. Q is underrated in that way too. How he identified the biggest problem personnel-wise from last year and has completely fixed it. You talk about two guys that have changed the entire outlook of the franchise from a defensive perspective. Seriously. Back-to-back picks, once again, how did they not have to trade up for Quinion Mitchell? I thought you could get one or one of these two. Like, Gino, and they got in, our, in our mock drafts, we're like, maybe it's DeGene. Maybe if we don't trade up for Q, it's it's Cooper here. They got both, and they didn't have to trade up for both. Like, that's ridiculous. The thing about Coop is that he's only played three games since the bye, and he looks so polished. That play, where it is fourth down, yeah. game on the line, Vic Fangio... He had some questionable decisions in terms of coverage early on where Nolan Smith is defending Jamar Chase one-on-one, and you're like, I don't know about that. And then Avante Maddox is in coverage on Mike Kosicki, and you're like, eh, we've seen this one before. Mm -hmm. But then Vic Fangio says, I'm going to put number 33, Cooper DeGene, in man coverage to follow Jamar Chase on fourth and one where Jamar Chase is doing all He's this motion and in the backfield. He's tracking him, dude. <laughs> He's just cooking step for step. Gets out to the flat. You know the ball is hit, going his way. Takes a perfect angle. Gets down the field. Clicks and close. And makes a perfect tackle in the biggest spot on the best player, arguably at his position in the so National fo- Football League. He is so good. And Quinion Mitchell, him and Cooper DeGean, 1A, 1B for the next 10 years. That's all you need to know about the secondary. In the last three games, Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeGene have allowed just 10 catches on 19 targets for 62 yards, according to Next Gen stats. Just unbelievable. The only thing we need to see come their way are interceptions. They both should have had a pick again on Sunday. Again, I believe there's a hex out there. Mm -hmm. Someone's got a voodoo doll of Q, and we got to find this person. Maybe that's what it is. The way (laughs) we we sold our soul that we were going to get these guys. Maybe that's what it was. Without having to trade away assets. And the thing is, they're just never going to catch the football. Xavier McKinney has six picks. He leads the NFL right now. Quinion Mitchell should have seven. He should have a pick in every single game. And the fact that he has zero is one of the biggest phenomena, you know, I've ever seen watching football. I've never seen anything like this where a player has so many chances because of what they do well. Like, give Mm -hmm. him credit. It's not like the balls are just randomly coming to him. Like, he's earning these playmaking opportunities and just not catching them. Like, he's – and it's not always his fault. Sometimes they're tough plays to be made. But we got to get these guys on the jug machine because if they start to – turn these plays, these pass deflections, force and completions into picks, it's going to put this team even on another level. I mean, stock up to the turnover battle, though, Dude, too. Yeah. Man. Three in like, the second half. I mean, you're at plus two for the game, finally. You yeah, needed yeah. it. You needed it so badly for your defense to help you out in that regard. They did a really good job not breaking over the last couple of weeks. Just two touchdowns allowed. Both of them came in this Cincinnati game in the last three weeks since yeah. the bye week. But, man... To see that play from Isaiah Rodgers, to have CGJ nowhere to be, get that turnover there. Then the next one is 
just your linebackers being dogs. I mean, See, Zach the two Bond. of the turnovers were from plays against Jamar Chase. Like that's my thing. That's so encouraging too. Yes, when, when you're looking at tape, you're gonna pull up their best player, mm. and then the times that they defended their best player. So for multiple plays to be made on Jamar Chase, who we've seen the Justin Jefferson games of the world, or like the the games where these receivers, you know, they're going to be CD Lamb, for example, has has cooked the Eagles. Amari Cooper back in his day as well. They kept him at bay. I mean, a, as limited as you can talk about for a guy like Jamar Chase, for him not to beat you and to be on the ball near him every single time, making it competitive, that's how you win football games. When they allow 17 or less points, Lou, they don't lose. It's just math. Like, they're really good on offense. They can score north of 20 on any given Sunday, but their defense right now, it is cooking, and they are winning youth athleticism guys up front man like they're not talked about enough after this game as well those georgia bulldogs nolan smith three sacks in his last three games the run game is not as good as it is without jordan davis finally figuring it out and being that player that we knew the floor with him could be guys like milton williams thomas booker are making plays brandon graham makes the play before the big fourth down play to Cooper Dishy. You can mention everyone, man. Nicobe D. Carter, they're all so good. Listen to these numbers before we wrap up the show. Since the bye week, the Eagles defense ranks number one in points allowed, number one in yards allowed per game, number two in sacks, number two in EPA per play, first in defensive success rate, and they're fifth in red zone scoring percentage. Like that's an elite defense. As good as and you can ask. Considering how egregious they looked against Tampa Bay to pull that off to rip those performances in three straight games. And one of them was against Joe Burrow is bananas to me. And the good thing is now, you know that it's not just against the Browns. It's not just against the giants. This is against top level competition that Vic Fangio, this cover six thing, man, he'll make you win this game. Death by a thousand cuts but they're not going to allow an explosive play, not just on the ground, but in the air either. Have they allowed a deep ball this year? That's the thing, Lou. How many times have receivers gotten behind them? Very not, few. I can't even tell you. I mean, the closest was when Shahid almost got that over Q mm -hmm. against the Saints. I don't know if they've – they've allowed some explosive plays, but it's been run after the catch of Ante Maddox or somebody misses a tackle. But they're – I can't – remember a time this year where somebody beat them deep i don't know no like even playing the browns with amari cooper he didn't really threaten you deep at all last no. week you didn't really malik neighbors i mean that was like a lot of intermediate stuff where he was pushing the pace on you and i mean chase only tested you once yesterday and again mm -hmm. that was the rogers play. he had nine catches but it was only for 52 yards and that touchdown which against Again, was against Nolan Smith. What, so. for, I mean, a little over five yards a catch for, oh, <laughs> for Jamar by, Chase. Like, know, yeah, that that's a win. On the show. Like, if you would have told us, yeah, he's got nine catches and a touchdown, we're like, uh-oh. But for only 50 yards, I would have signed up for that. And instead. the touchdown was against Nolan Smith. And it was only because <laughs> it was a great play call. Like, Chase's pre-snap motion called into the backfield, which ends up getting the matchup against Nolan. That's not going to happen every single play. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, they're not getting beat deep, and that's massive in the modern-day NFL. And I think it all starts up front with the run game, man. Like how good they were in 2022 to get a lot of those plays on the ball. It started because their run game and their run defense was exceptional. And they are finally back to that, man. Like rookie Jordan Davis, whatever he did back then, he has figured it out now. Jalen Carter, exceptional. Getting to the quarterback That one-on-one -on -one in the first quarter, you said it on another show that you thought it was a free rush. It, it wasn't. He got to the quarterback so quickly from the television view. I had no idea that he was actually not. He was actually like held up a little bit. Like oh, yeah. the, the the center got his hands on him, but then he's like, "No, no, no! I'm just gonna arm over club, and I'm going to get his to the club quarterback." Move might be the best in football. It, it's lethal at this point. Not a lot of hits on Joe Burrow. But he got the ball out quickly, but at the same time, they made him make quick decisions. And yeah. they have a balance on all three levels at the defense. How beautiful is that to say, Lou? You could get one of the three units working last year, maybe, on a good Sunday. Down the stretch, nothing was working properly. Now, it is a well-oiled machine. 
Vic Fangio, that old stubborn son of a gun, he said, just wait, we're going to get this thing figured out. And it's not taking guys out of the rotation and limiting it to a certain amount. We're playing everybody. Like everybody is getting something to eat in this buffet, which they call the Eagles defense. And it turned into an impressive, dominant statement win over the Bengals, 37-17, to 17, the final score. The Eagles have won three straight games and are now 5-2. and two. We'll switch gears and take a look at this Jaguars matchup tomorrow on the show. Got crossover Thursday with Wiggs from Locked On Jaguars. That'll be fun. And then our Friday show as well. Thanks so much for making us your first listen each and every day right here on Locked On Eagles. For Gino Camilleri, I'm Lou DiBiase signing off. Thanks so much for downloading, watching, and listening. And as always, let's go, birds. Fly, Eagles, fly.